hello student so in this tutorial we will try uh, to understand what is interrupt cycle and what is need of interrupt so in previous video we have seen that what is input output cycle means how input and how output operation will be performed into the computer while we were discuss while we were discussing that uh, what is input and output cycle at that time uh, we have uh, learned that uh, clock frequency of cpu is very high means uh, number of e instructions executed by cpu in a second is uh, very high while the clock frequency of input device is very low so there is a, a huge clock frequency gap between input device and cpu input output device and cpu so uh, if we go with the conventional way uh, which we have discussed in uh, uh, previous video then uh, what will happen uh, cpu will waste its most of time in checking the input flag and output flag so uh, let me just give you an example so uh, let us uh, consider uh, a value let's say cpu take one microsecond to execute one instruction next so in one second we can have 10 raised to 6 instruction and we are having an input device which has maximum data transfer rate let's say 10 character per second clear with this so uh, what we can say we will have hundred thousand microsecond for one character okay so uh, what will happen in this case so if we will execute uh, two instruction to check the flag bit of uh, uh, input device and output device so uh, to check whether the device are ready for data transfer uh, data transfer or not okay so if we calculate the value then uh, cpu will uh, uh, cpu will check uh, 15000 time cpu will check 15000 uh, 50000 times whether the input is available or not okay so now this is a significant amount of time will be wasted in checking the input and output flag so how computer will deal with this issue or how we can uh, improve the utilization time of computer so to efficiently or to effectively utilize the um, cpu we will go with the interrupt cycle now as you can see in the figure that uh, we are having interrupt cycle and interrupt cycle is having various component uh, like uh, this is the in instruction cycle this is the interrupt checking mechanism means uh, uh, we can check whether the input or, or output is ready or not and this is uh, you can say the interrupt subroutine so let us start our discussion how it is implemented now as you can see in interrupt cycle we will have a flag called r this r represent the interrupt okay so uh, which type of execution will be there it will be decided uh, based on the value of r so here r represent the interrupt So on how normal execution will be there. So by default, if there is not any input, uh, sorry, interrupt, okay, then uh, it will go to the left side, which is instruction cycle. Now instruction cycle uh, here, 
first page is, is fetch decode and uh, fetch and decode instruction okay so if we discuss about timing signal then t0 t1 and t2 uh, this timing signal will be there for fetch and decoding the instruction while in t3 cpu will execute the instruction while cpu is executing the instruction it will also check whether the interrupt is enabled or not so in parallel to execution of this instruction cpu will go with this part now what is this part so first of all uh, cpu will check whether interrupt is enabled or not now what is meaning of interrupt enable so if it is one then uh, CPU is giving permission to external device to uh, generate an interrupt. Interrupt means disturbance. So whatever normal execution will be there uh, in CPU, okay, it will be paused uh, temporarily and CPU will handle the input output request. So uh, whether we want to uh, manage the input output request or not, it will be decided by value of interrupt enable. So if interrupt enable is one, then it will be allowed to um, manage the it, it will be allowed to manage the external disturbance means uh, external request. And if it is zero, then uh, whatever current execution is there, uh, it won't be. Uh, stopped or paused at any cost okay so cpu will continue with the normal execution now uh, let us assume that value of interrupt enable is one so we have allowed the interrupt then cpu will check whether the request or the interrupt is generated by input device or not so if it is generated by input device then it will set the value of r21 uh, dear learners uh, please uh, make sure that this is not a single standalone process in parallel to this process there is a uh, execution of instruction so while cpu is executing the instruction it will also check all these things so uh, CPU will check whether the input flag is set or not. Let's assume that uh, interrupt is generated because of input device. So a uh, value of R will be set to one. And uh, as soon as value of uh, R will be set to one, uh, it will go with the next cycle. But as you can see in the figure that uh, here, if the value of R is one, then it will not go with the instruction cycle or it will not go with the other interrupt request. It will go with the uh, interrupt routine let me try to draw a figure for you people so you can understand that uh, how it will be uh, implemented or how interrupt cycle will be implemented so uh, let's assume this is memory map first location of memory map uh, or memory will be kept empty uh, on next location let us assume that it, it stored the uh, subroutine address of a particular interrupt so let's say zero branch zero four zero here we are having some uh, main program means currently executing program program which is executed by cpu so here uh, let's say currently we are uh, executing the instruction which is on memory location 25 and so value of program counter will be 26 so this is our main program or you can say user program set of instruction which is supposed to be executed as a process here we are having the io program okay program which is which will deal 
with the input output device okay means which is used to handle the input output request and last instruction in this io program is one branch zero yes so how interrupt cycle will be executed now as you can see whenever there will be uh, interrupt request uh, there is a input output operation request because of interrupt then cpu will hold or it will pause the uh, current execution it will store the current status into the memory location zero so the first uh, uh, location will be used to store the value of program counter so right now we are executing the instruction uh, which is on location 25 so the next instruction will be uh, 26 so 26 will be stored on location 0 clear with this next next is let's say this location specify the uh, subroutine address which will deal with the input output request okay so what is the instruction 0 branch 0 for 0 so uh, we will branch to location 1 and then we will disable the interrupt so no other device can generate the uh, request or we will not manage that request and we will set R to 0. Now meaning of setting R to 0 that means interrupt is handled. So next time after doing this it will again if we it will go to the top of this flowchart then it will not go right side but it will go left side now then it will uh, uh, start with the uh, instruction which is on location 1 what is a instruction on location 1 0 branch 40 so after executing of this instruction in first phase okay uh, program counter or control of a execution will be transferred to location 0 for 0 then the first instruction will be fetched it will be executed next instruction will be fetched it will be executed next instruction will be fetched it will be executed next instruction will be fetched it will be executed while cpu is managing this interrupt it will never go this side why because value of interrupt enable is zero clear with this so what will happen whenever CPU will go to the last instruction? What is last instruction? 1 branch 0. Okay, so this is not direct addressing but indirect addressing. So at the execution of this instruction, it will go to this rather than treating 26 as an uh, 0 as an actual address to jump. We will use, to, uh, we will treat 26 as an effective address to jump. So from here, it will go to location number 26 using indirect addressing mode okay so this is how an interrupt cycle will be managed while it will execute this instruction again uh, value of interrupt enable flag will be set to 1 clear with this okay so this is how cpu will uh, manage the input output operation using interrupt okay so this this will be the efficient way why because cpu will not waste it its time in uh, checking the input flag and output flag now let us continue our discussion we will try to understand then when uh, interrupt request will be handled So uh, as we can see when we will check for the interrupt except timing signal T0, T1 and T2. Okay, so T0 dash, T1 dash, T2 dash and what will be the second and required condition? interrupt value of interrupt enable should be 1 <coughs> excuse me and then what will be the third condition either value of 
इनपुट फ्लैग और आउटपुट फ्लैग शुड बी वन ओके सो इफ दिस कंडीशन इज ट्रू देन वैल्यू ऑफ आर विल बी सेट टू वन वी कैन से दिस विल वर्क एज ए कंट्रोल फंक्शन फॉर सेटिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ इंटर फ्लैग आर now let us just try to uh, convert that uh, interrupt execution process into timing signal so whenever interrupt cycle will uh, it, it will be executed okay it will go uh, this side then at first timing signal rt0 okay zero will be stored into address register and uh, program counter will be stored into temporary register so till now we have not discussed the use of uh, program counter but uh, now uh, sorry till till now we have not discussed the use of uh, temporary register but here you can see how temporary register will be helpful in uh, storing the intermediate result then what will happen next clock cycle rt1 we will store the value of program counter on location memory location 0 okay which is already stored into temporary register and we will initialize program counter to 0 then what will happen in next clock cycle now currently program counter is pointing at zero location actually uh, first location specify the program uh, location uh, of uh, input output subroutine so pc will be incremented pc is equals to pc plus 1 and then interrupt will be disabled so no other device can generate any interrupt io io request r will be set to 0 that means interrupt is managed and sequence counter will be initialized to 0 so after doing this from next instruction onwards whatever instruction will be executed it will belongs to subroutine of io program the subroutine is same as higher level uh, programming language user defined function okay so the pip, the uh, you people are writing a user defined function in high level programming language like uh, c c++ or java so dot net so uh, this is same as uh, subroutine okay so subroutine is nothing but a function for uh, handling the request of a particular hardware device or uh, whatever task you are performing frequently it will be stored in form of subroutine so in this tutorial in this video in this video we will keep up to this uh, thank you